I've got a choice. Stay at home with my mum, my boyfriend, my job, or chuck it all in for danger and monsters and life or death. What do you think? Doctor Who, Saturday at 7 on BBC One. If you're a big sci-fi fan, then you're going to love that on Saturday, but I think that's far too far away, Mimi. Well, you don't have to wait any longer because it's time for Blue Peter and Billy and Christopher are in the studio. On today's Blue Peter, hide behind the sofa as we meet the new Doctor Who and some of the monsters he faces. That. I'll be showing you how to make one of these uh, very cute uh, little Easter fellows. You won't need to hide behind yourself with this one. Really? Hang on a minute. What is that noise? I don't know, but there's some very strange noises. Is What's going on? on? What's going on? Oh, we've got an arrival in the studio, everyone. Who could this be? Hey! Doctor Who, also known as Christopher It's great to see you. Welcome to Blue Peter, and of Thank course, you. welcome to the year 2005. Thanks, <laughs> glad, I'm, glad I made it. <laughs> now, Chris, before we have a little chat, uh, here's how the Doctor has been introducing himself to viewers. Do you want to come with me? Because if you do, then I should warn you. Because if you do, because if you do, then I should warn you. You're going to see all sorts of things. Ghosts from the past, aliens from the future, the day the Earth died in a ball of flame. It won't be quiet, it won't be safe, and it won't be calm. But I tell you what, it will be. Tell you what it will be. The trip of a lifetime. Great stuff there, Chris. <laughs> Brilliant. So tell us, who exactly is Doctor Who, and why is he travelling through time and space? Doctor Who is an alien with two hearts, and he's 900 years of age from the planet Gallifrey. Ooh. And he's travelling through time to promote peace and to have adventures. Great. Brilliant. Now, we saw you arrive in the TARDIS. Now, I know it's very different on the inside to how it looks on the outside. Can you tell us exactly what is a TARDIS? A TARDIS is a, a, sp is a, is a machine for travelling backwards and forwards in time. It's a time-travelling capsule. And this particular one's disguised as a police box from the 1960s. And you'll find out why in the series. So this is the one from the actual series, isn't it? This is the one that we've been filming Brilliant. with for eight months. Yeah, yeah. And it's very big Great. inside, isn't it? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's bigger on the inside, much bigger. You'll find that all out in the series. Now, you mentioned that Doctor Who was an alien. Doctor Who has a human companion called Rose, who is played uh, by Billy Piper. And Billy was supposed to be here uh, today, wasn't she, Chris? But she's not very well, so uh, we do wish Billy all the very best. But I did catch up with Billy uh, during uh, filming on set of the new series. Ah, uh, action. Billy, Hi. how are you doing? I'm good. How it's you lovely doing? to see you. I'm, you. I'm good. I tell you what, it's very chaotic around here, isn't it's it? <laughs> it's the scenes madness. going here, the scenes there. I know, and you we're just dashing around yeah. from one scene to the next. I'm very got a, I haven't got a clue where I am. I don't know about you with your lines and no, things like that. I, I often feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, 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 you're playing Rose, aren't you? So yeah. tell us a little bit about her and what's her role in it. Um, Rose is 19 years old and she's this kind of uh, go-getter, feisty, um, fun, looking for adventure yeah. um, kind of girl who um, meets the Doctor and, and decides to go on some serious travels with him. I'm the Doctor, by the way. What's your name? Rose. Nice to meet you, Rose. Run for your life! into one of his adventures and then um, they get on famously and kind of pair up and become a tag team and um, they kind of educate each other. She, he kind of opens her eyes and broadens her horizons and shows her what yeah. life can be like and she kind of 
teaches him about human emotions and morals and basic principles that he has no idea about and right, right. is really not very tax tactful at all. So, um, so is it quite so a challenging role? Do you find it? Yeah, it, it's challenging as much as it's very physical, um, very emotional at times. Open the gate! Use that chip thing, come on! Sonic screwdriver. Use it! Nah. I'll tell you what, let's go in here. Inside a wooden box. Oh, it's gonna get us, Doctor. Great taste stuff. there. It's Brilliant stuff. stuff. And you can see my full behind-the-scenes report uh, later on this summer. Now, Doctor Who first started in 1963. And uh, although it's been off the TV for quite a while, it's famous for its very scary aliens that Doctor, mm -hmm. that Doctor Who meets and all of these people that he encounters. Uh, he first met the Autons way back in the 1970s. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the Autons actually make uh, an appearance in the new series, yeah? The Autons, which are uh, basically plastic dummies that we pass in the street, Every day, if you pass the, you know, yeah. your local store, get animated, yeah, and they attack myself and Billy in the first episode. They're what they're my they're they're what I'm fighting in the first ep episode. Oh, okay, okay. And t tell us a little bit about the special effects because it was also quite famous for the uh, the special effects, or <laughs> shall we say, the effects. <laughs> yeah, the, the old program, uh, perhaps slightly unfairly at times, has got a reputation for having wobbly sets mm. and uh, low production values. But we've brought, we thought it was very important with things like Buffy the Vampire Slayer that people watch to bring the uh, special effects up to date and spend, a f spend some money on it. And, yeah, yeah. and we've done that, so the special effects are as good as anything you'll see, we hope. Yeah. We've, certainly, we've certainly tried. Yeah, the trailer looks amazing. Now, you're the ninth actor to play Doctor Who on the television. Uh, a lot of pressure comes with that, obviously, a bit like James Bond or even Blue Peter presenters. Everybody mm. has their favourite. <laughs> How did you feel about taking on a role like that? I was very excited because um, I've been acting for about 18 years and I felt ready to do something with that kind of responsibility. And because the, the, the stories which are written by Russell T Davis, the scripts, are so strong, I, I felt that I had a good chance of pulling it off because you're only really as good as the stories that are written for you. Mm. Sure. So the scripts were good. Now, I used mm. to be terrified of some of the monsters, literally hiding behind the sofa. <gasps> Tell us about some of the monsters that you're going to encounter. Well, we've got one here. Really? The ah, face ah, behind right behind In case you haven't noticed, the face of Bo, who, Bo. Ap who appears in episode two. That looks terrifying. What does that do? The face of Bo all will be revealed. Actually, it's not a villain, the face, um, but it does re recur throughout the series. It, we meet it within a convention of aliens, a, a collection of aliens who are there to witness the end of the world. It's great, great to have it here in the studio. Now well, also here in the studio we have uh, your jacket. Oh, where'd you get that from? Well, it was just behind there actually. Oh, you don't okay. mind if I put it on, do you? Anything else? <laughs> no, I don't think Billy, so. Billy behind. No, no, she's not. She's, she's definitely not home in bed. Okay. She's not well at all. Uh, there we are. <laughs> there. What do you think? It's a little bit, it's a bit, too, it's a little bit too big no, for me. It's, it's, it fits you. It, it does. It feels great. Now, uh, all, all of the Doctor Who's in the past have had uh, sort of a costume uh, side to them, what with the long scarves yep. and the capes and what have yep. you. Uh, so why, what, why the, uh, the leather jacket on this one? Well, it was scripted uh, by, put into the stories by Russell that he, he should have a battered leather jacket, which we thought would be good because he's a traveller, yeah. traveller in time. Yeah. Um, and it's quite practical as well because it's tough and it's a very physical role. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be the thing that kind of people have latched onto with, with yeah. my Doctor. Yeah, no, it's lovely. Now then, in episode one of the new series, the uh, Orton alien intelligence turns plastic into a, a deadly killing force. And uh, here's the moment where a wheelie bin turns very nasty indeed. Commandant! <laughs> I love that burp. Nice bit. little burp. Yeah, really not a very nice way to go, but there we are. Uh, now, as we said before, it was being famous. Are you going to take that jacket nice off? Uh, I hope you're going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it behind the sofa where I think lots of people... You can keep it. I, I do think lots of people will be hiding behind uh, their sofas uh, at home. So will it be as scary as the, uh, as the, the previous 
Doctor Who's? I think so. It, the, episode three, for instance, which has Gelf, the character, uh, villains called the Gelf, who hide inside the gas pipes, right. were very frightening. Oh, dear. Yeah. Now, uh, in episode four, we can't uh, let too much away, but I'm actually going to be in that. Here we go. Oh. Here no, we go. <laughs> I am. I do make a, a Are brief you scary? appearance. Well, I would say, I'm not that scary. I'm not supposed to be scary, but I would make sure that there's lots of room behind the sofa uh, for that moment. <laughs> yeah, Doctor Who and Blue Peter, of course, have quite an affinity, don't they? There's a lot yeah. in common. I think, uh, I think Peter Purvis, who was a presenter when I was, when I was young, yeah. was in Doctor Who. Yeah, uh, and also Russell T. Davis, who wrote the stories, the scripts for the series, once wrote to Blue Peter and suggested that you organise the competition to create an alien for the new series back, I don't know, 25 years ago and somewhere in the archives. You've got Russell's. Yeah. And of course it used to be filmed right here in this very studio. In this did studio? It? Yes. Yeah, it did. Oh, yeah. that is exciting. You I hear all these that. hilarious stories yeah, yeah. of people wandering around in the most uh, ridiculous costumes, but uh, yeah. there's a few over there, that. but they're not on Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you've been filming it since last July. What's the hardest thing about filming Doctor Who? <laughs> the hardest thing about filming Doctor Who is, is the fact that you don't have any life. We, we do 12 and 14 hour days filming on set. And then because I was playing a lead role, I'd have to go home at night and learn all my lines. So you couldn't really do anything else. It was a great honour and a great privilege, but it yeah. does completely take over your life. Yeah, sure. Now, my favourite monsters uh, are the, the classic Daleks, who uh, will be reappearing later in the series. Uh, but in the meantime, if you'd like to actually make a, your very own Dalek, which actually makes Earth rather than destroys it, then do keep watching. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Chris. It's been great talking to you. Thank Look you. forward to it. Yeah, great. Super to meet you. Now then, uh, to a sport that's making a very big splash. Simon and Liz put their goggles and their swimming caps on uh, to take the plunge uh, with Rushmore, the national synchronised swimming champions. Early synchronised swimmers were known as the modern mermaids, and it's not hard to see why. Not only do they have the agility of a gymnast, but they also have the grace of a ballerina. Sadly, I'm no ballerina, or for that matter, gymnast Ooh. either, but coach Adele Carlson was determined to change all that. So why are we torturing this on Adele? This is to stretch out our muscles so we're able to do the box splits in the water, which is a requirement we need for synchronised swimming. So what makes a good synchronised swimmer? You have to be flexible, you have to be very strong, you need to be able to hold your breath for a long time, and you need to look graceful in the water as well. So why do you need to be so flexible? That's so we can get into a range of different movements and different positions in the water. The more flexible you are, the easier it is. Adele, I've been told that one of the top three synchronised swimmers in the world is a man, is that true? Yes, that's right, it's an American called Bill May. And if that's the case, why are men not allowed to compete in the Olympic Games? Because synchronised swimming got its Olympic status by being a women's only sport and that's the way they want to keep it at the moment. Do you think it's ever going to change? Hopefully one day. I think more and more boys are taking it up now, so I think that should change soon. Before we started practising a few of the techniques in the water, Adele got us to play a game of underwater tag to improve our ability to hold our breath for long periods of time. Most top synchronised swimmers can hold their breath underwater for up to three minutes. The average person would struggle to hold their breath for 45 seconds. Right. Well, we've held our breath for about 10 seconds. What's next? <laughs> OK, right, we're going to learn how to egg beat, first of all. This is a movement that synchronised swimmers do with their legs while they're up, up in the water with their head out, so it frees the arms. It's the same technique that water polo players use. OK, so I'm just going to bring Kerry in to demonstrate. So it's like you're sitting on a chair and the legs rotate one at a time into the middle. So it's different to treading water, isn't it? It is. Treading water, both legs go at the same time, so it makes you bounce. This one makes you be able to stay up stable. OK, so if you'd like to have a go. <laughs> so you've got to move them independently. That's it. Round like an egg beater. Round, 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 round. Try and keep their thighs still. <laughs> OK, right, do you want to have a go at sculling then? Yeah. Sculling. Okay, sculling's a movement we do with our arms when you want to free your legs up so legs can do movements, OK? So the basic thing of sculling are fingers together, hands slightly cupped, and you're basically pushing the water out and in, OK? Moving from the elbow. OK, so if you just try that while, whilst upright in the water, just push out and in. 
feel like you're drawing a figure of eight on its side with each hand. Once Adele had taken us through the basics, we then had a go at some more complicated techniques. Oh. Well, I've got nothing but respect for these guys because synchronized swimming is tough. You've got to be strong, you've got to be fit, you've got to be flexible, you've got to have endurance, you've got to have a whole lot, basically. <laughs> We might have been exhausted, but we felt just about ready to have a go at a routine. The centrepiece of the routine we were going to try was the opening lift. But who was going to be lifted? It wasn't going to be me. So then I had a go. <laughs> After a bit, we cracked it. <laughs> now it was time for a full routine, and my big moment was that opening lift while I focused on trying to keep up with the rest of the girls. The training had certainly come in handy, but it made me realise how incredibly skillful you have to be, whether you're a girl or a boy. Wow! Ah, <laughs> oh, great stuff, and a very nice way to get yourself in shape after all those Easter eggs. And talking of Easter, it is a celebration, so if you want to make something very nice uh, for your friends and family, then these very cute little Easter animals. Look at these, they're just the thing. Now, as you can already see, I've made, I've made a few here. I've got some, uh, some sheep standing by, I've got some uh, very nice handsome cockerels, and little bunnies, and these chicks here, which I'm gonna be making now. Now, the method for making these is pretty much the same, so you can find all the instructions uh, on the website for each one. Now, first of all, uh, you're gonna need to make some dough. This is very simple. Get one cup of plain flour, add to that half a cup of salt, and then just get a mixing spoon and add in uh, the water. Now, I'm not going to do this properly now, but basically add in the water gently, stir it around, and once it's all nicely mixed in, you then need to knead it with your hands. You know the score, and you need to do that for around about 10 minutes. That will get rid of any little sneaky little gaps in the dough, because what will happen is when they go into the oven eventually, uh, those cracks will expand and you'll have a disastrous looking chick. OK, let's go on to making the actual chick. And what you need to do is to get a piece of dough which is around about the size of uh, of a satsuma, so about that sort of size, and then roll it in the hands until it's, uh, it's a nice round shape. How's that looking? Mm, kind of round. And then pop it on the, uh, the chopping board, place it over there, and then with one half of your hand, begin to roll very gently. You're basically trying to make one end uh, of the ball of dough thinner than the other, so into a kind of a chick shape. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. And then you can just knead it with your hands to make a little bit of a neck shape and then press it down a little bit just so you uh, begin to make a bit of a base. And uh, how's that looking? Yeah, a bit Stonehenge, but fine, fine, fine. It'll be fine once it's been in the oven. OK, uh, next um, time for the beak. And this just needs to be a little tiny bit of dough and roll this into the ball, rolling the ball. And then it's kind of a mini version of what you've just done make it a big shape and pop it on there. And if you find it doesn't stick, just use a bit of water and um, use a pallet knife just to smooth around the edges. So you just get rid of those uh, tough edges and when that goes in the oven and cooks, hmm. Looking quite a big nose, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, for the eyes, uh, get yourself a cocktail stick and then uh, roughly decide where your eyes are gonna be. So I'm gonna have one there and one there. Are we looking? Hmm, handsome-ish, handsome-ish. And then on the bottom, with your cocktail stick, all you need to do is to make the holes where the feet will go a little bit later. So you need six holes. That's one, two, three, and then over the other side, one, two, three. Okay, I'll show you exactly why I've done that uh, in just a moment. Now, if you've been looking at the sheep and thinking, wonderful, really nice, don't know how you did that, uh, this is how it's done, okay? You just get some more of your dough that you've made and, and pop it into one of these. I know you've seen one of these. It's a garlic press. Okay, so pop your dough into there and then just give it a squeeze and have a look at this. Wonderful moment. Here it comes. Very nice. Almost maggoty in quality. And you just then put that onto your sheet and away you go. Okay, this chick I think is ready uh, for its oven experience. So uh, let's get my uh, pre-foiled bit of tray. There's uh, three others standing by, ready to go. And a slightly different shape to this one. And then, um, hmm, get your oven gloves. And hopefully when he's been into the oven for around about one to two hours, he'll be looking a bit different to what he does now. Stand back up, fella. There we go, lovely. Into the oven, 100 degrees uh, Celsius, this one. And uh, one to two hours, be patient. Uh, once they're out, leave them to dry and leave them to cool down. Okay, must leave them to cool down. And you'll be left with something uh, a little bit 
like this, okay? Uh, that's what he's gonna look like, and I've already covered this one in his yellow coat of paint, and then get a thinnish brush for the nose. I'm gonna go for a nice red color, so you need some nice red paint. Okay, let's just pop that around there. Looking lovely, okay. I know it's a bright color, but less of your beak if you don't mind. Uh, for the eyes, just a bit of black paint, uh, fill in those little holes there. And then this is the magic moment, uh, which is the feet. And I'll show you how this is done. I'll pop you over there and let you dry if you don't mind. Uh, you just need some pipe cleaners. I've gone for brown. Brown's a good color for the feet. Uh, three centimeter lengths. And the reason why I made those holes earlier, you can just dab a bit of glue into there first and just push them in very firmly like that. And once it's in, just bend it around and keep doing that for the other five holes until uh, you are left with something like this. Looking lovely, feathers as well. These are just feathers you can get down at a craft shop and I've stuck them on using a nice bit of glue. So feet in place, beak looking nice, eyes looking delightful, ready for an Easter party. And I'll just pop you over there uh, with the rest and have a very uh, happy Easter, guys. Nice to see you. Well done, Liz. Do you oh, like that? They are absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure lots of you at home will be wanting to make them. And you know that we love looking at all the things you make because they really are amazing. And this week, Chris, in your honour, it's a blue... Oh, it's a blue Peter theme. It's a Doctor Who theme. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is David from Preston, and he's a huge fan of Doctor Who, and he sent in some models that he made. He wrote to tell us how he put on a Doctor Who model exhibition at his school open evening. And here they are. This, of course, is the Daleks. They look really realistic. It's all made out of cardboard. It's good, isn't it? Incredible, yeah. And in your honour, here we are. This is you and Billy. He's, and he's made these models of you. He's put the ears in as well, hasn't he? It's a great likeness. Uh, and can I tell you, this is actually his hair right. here that he's cut off and used for Billy. I'm not sure whether Billy would be completely <laughs> pleased with that one, <laughs> but I'm, I'm very you. grateful for that one. <laughs> they fantastic. are, they're great, He needs a job they? on the design team. I know. I'll tell you what, take it away with you in short. Do you love it? Yeah, <laughs> she really will. <laughs> now, it's obviously the Daleks that have uh, captured most of your imaginations and has scared you the most. Just have a look at this. Now, believe it or not, uh, Chris, this is a compost bin. It's, com it's not a real Dalek. It's not. And it's <laughs> actually I'm been... sitting away from it, <laughs> yeah. And it's been made by uh, two brothers, Reese and Jim from Chester. Uh, and uh, they, well, just, it's absolutely unbelievable. They've wrote, wrote us a fabulous uh, letter here saying that they've made it with all sorts of bits, uh, mostly from their dad's garage, which is uh, absolutely brilliant. And if you like it as much as we do, then uh, we're actually going to be making this. So uh, keep your eyes peeled because uh, we think it's absolutely fabulous. Well done, lads. Brilliant. Now we're going to travel into the future and find out what's on Blue Peter this week. Tomorrow, it's Peter, Blue Peter, as we celebrate the amazing James Bond films. See us as we've never been seen before and get ready to be shaken, not stirred. And coming up next week, the sporting stars of Blue Peter and CBBC battle it out in the pool, on the track and in the gym. But only one team can succeed and take the title of Blue Peter Champions 2005. Honestly, I tell you what, it was that cold that Sirius Arctic has not got a patch on that. No, it was freezing. Really... But make sure you watch it. Yeah, well, that is nearly it uh, for today. But before we go, tell us, Chris, what can we look forward to in episode one? Episode one, we get the Autons and the introduction of Billy Piper as Rose. Great. Lovely. And it starts when? It starts on Saturday at 7 pm. Brilliant. We will all be tuned in. On BBC One, of course. Now, uh, you can chat to me live on the website at 6.30 this evening. Just log on to bbc.co.uk forward slash CBBC. Think of a question and ask me it, and I'll be there. We'll see you soon. See Bye. you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Lucy from Huddersfield sent us this brilliant picture of our Blue Peter ship made out of corks. Well done, Lucy. We really love the picture. And as this is the second time you've written to us, a silver badge is on its way. Nice one, guys. Can't wait for Doctor Who on Saturday. Plus, if you want more from Blue Peter, you can get it over on the CBBC channel at 6 o'clock. And also, you heard Liz mention that she is doing a live web chat uh, at 6.30. Go to bbc.co.uk slash cbbc.